As a marketing agency, we work with so many influencers. We want to give people a good insight of what it actually is to be an influencer. The streets are so empty because it's not even 8 a.m. in the morning. And we're here to meet Lisa Boisel. We're very interested in what she does and in terms of how she runs her own social media and how she attracts new business and the whole business model around it. So we'll see how we get on. difference with us is they focus a lot on training and how to make the PA a better PA and how they can progress in their jobs. I saw that there was quite a lot of companies doing that so I was like no there's no point doing that so what was missing was they were making the introductions into corporate hotels like your Hilton Hotel but no one was introducing them to speakeasy bars or really quirky kind of stuff and for the new openings you know keeping them in the know. She's um, like trying to look everyone in. <laughs> so Danny heads up our marketing and events. Okay. So she organizes all our events and uh, start to finish. Our whole premise is to show the PAs it's the best places in London that they don't know yeah. about, and the events is the best way to do that. So yeah. you know you don't know a venue through photos, even though. You think you know everything through Instagram and social media at the moment, yeah. but still, it's so great to be able to bring them in. We want to get our partners the best coverage as possible. Yeah. But since we've seen the Instagram grow so naturally, it's not something that we're totally willing to just allow for paid posts. Yeah. And we are quite fussy about it. At the end of the day, we love their food and we love their venue. Yeah. That's the only reason they work yeah. with us. So, you know, we want to promote that. I think you can tell a genuine organic Instagram yeah, to a paid Instagram. Yeah, I want yeah. them to genuinely love what we're posting yeah. about and be interested by it. I had to start fresh. I'd moved over from Dublin. I knew absolutely nobody in the hospitality industry at all. Yeah. I had no contacts. And so what I did was I just targeted the big hotels and restaurants. So like places like Hakkasan. I just went in and was like, look, I've got this amount of PAs, can I run an event? I'll do it for free, I just want the exposure. Because people didn't really know what we were, like a lot of people didn't work with us. Yeah. It just wasn't easy, it was like, I'm not a salesperson. I felt like I was in a sales role, like not yeah. door to door. I think every business is like yeah. that. Regardless of what you'd be doing, you'd be like literally making magic happen. You'll still have to tell the world about it and it's still going to feel salesy. And you have to be willing yeah. to graft. Like I think yeah. that's it. Like if there's something that you really want to do, like you just have to take the bad times with the good. And everyone has times and they're like, do you know what, this isn't going to work. We're so fortunate now that like everyone comes to us. Now I have so many people who wouldn't work with us at the start. Yeah, They're coming to us now yeah. and that, that's what feels amazing. And that a so beautiful good. venue. This is like their meeting okay. So it's massive. So you get these as a member, you can hire them as members. Anyone can hire them. Alright. Yeah. So it's, it's, all, it's all public event space. That's all fancy. We could, we could have a few meetings, just a few brainstorming sessions in here. Wide board would fit so well, and then like this beautiful room. One of the PAs is like, I book my boss in here every day for lunch. And she's like, but I'm not experiencing it, so it's like nice when they get to experience it, to know what they're booking as well. I think that's a key thing. They need to be in the know, and it's, it's nice to give them a little bit of a perk yeah. as well. People always forget about the PA and they're the ones who do all the hard work and they're like the eyes and the ears of the company as well, like they mm. Except for this one, all the restaurants are for the public. Oh, it's stumbling home instead of cheeky kebab, you just come yeah. in for like a fancy breakfast. The best advice I was given anyway was take an idea but do it better. Yeah. So a lot of startups, they're taking ideas based on what they've seen. 
So then it's like, what can you do that's similar that might benefit you, but in a better way? So yeah. I'm not actually very creative. I get my ideas from talking to people. And a lot of people, I always think you're kind of one or the other. Like you can yeah. be really creative and you get all these like, mad ideas whereas I don't I just kind of listen to people and I'm like okay what could I do and there's nothing like this place in the yeah. city like this morning yeah. we were in here at 7 a.m buzzing yeah people doing breakfast meetings coffee everything you come in at midnight it's buzzing you don't have to be a member to use yeah, the place that's amazing, yeah. so I think that's what's great about it why do you need to make members club do you think it's to give that little bit of exclusivity, I think. I took Soho House membership because obviously we've got our offices, but we're, today we're out in the city, so a lot of the time I will work from here and base yourself there for the day with a laptop. And it's such a cheaper way instead of yeah. having an office. But also, it's such a great way to network and meet people. It's all about word of mouth, 100%. Yeah. So that's why networking is so important and we kind of any startup should literally be going to as many yeah. networking things as possible, and there's so much stuff out there. But see, like, it's, it's blurred out Enough. because it's like really cheeky. You have to kind of find your niche and what you're going to specialize in, yeah. and then do it well. Find a niche and do well. Yeah. Got it, Nick? But as you said, there is so much work behind it that, like, there's so much. Yeah. I mean, like, my friends, they're like, oh. You're just out eating all day. There's way more to it, the back yeah. end. I mean, it's such a great job and I'm so fortunate and I wouldn't change it for the world. But, you know, it's got its good days and bad days like every other job and sometimes it can be seen to be more lavish than it is. Yeah. Okay. We've got a James doppelganger right there at the bar. Can you see the dude in like pink, pink shirt? Oh, nah. Cigars, a great selection in the humidor. This is a very rare, oh, wow. 24 karat gold plated cigar actually. These are from 1998. An old selection of Partagos. Take care. Yeah. yeah. Have fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll be in touch, I'm sure. Yeah, thanks you. so Thank much. The more you know who you are and what you want, the less you let know, things upset you. Obviously, like, I enjoyed it. It was gorgeous lunch. Mm. I think more than anything, the stuff that we talked about, like, within the business, like, if you run it well, it makes such a difference. She's just such an amazing host. It's she makes thing. you feel so welcome. When you work with such great people, like Barbara, it just, you fall in love with the venue. And yeah. I, I always say, when we host these events, make it personal yeah. between yourselves and the PAs. And that's what yeah. the PAs want. Yeah. They know if they're getting treated well when they're brought to Boys to LSA, that when they're sending their boss yeah. a really important client lunch, that they're going to be dealt with well. There's a lot yeah. of stuffy venues 
in London and they fall to the wayside, they don't last long and Boys Tales quite a triumph in that it's been around for so long yeah. and they are really the essence of good service, good yeah. hospitality, brings in customers and keeps your customers more so. There's such turnover in London and so many restaurants last for a while and they're gone yeah. and once the magpie effect is gone and they're not shiny anymore, they lose out and Boys Tales are like that, they're just, they At kind least. of prove the test of time. Mm. Describe what you do and how you got here in three words. Obviously, social media played a huge part in it. Grafting and keep yourself motivated. I think if you're not motivated, if you're in a job that you're not happy in, you're not going to enjoy going every day. A job is what you make it at the end of the day. If you want it to be something that you want it to be, you're going to have a great time and you're going to yeah. love going to work and you're going to you're going to progress in life as well because you're going to grow and grow. But if you're doing something that you're not passionate about doing, you're just you, you'll be a plateau and you just will always be there. What I found really interesting is how she said that she struggles to actually explain what she does, which probably for like quite a few, quite a few even potential like influencers, it's difficult to explain that just your nice Instagram feed is not actually what you do. You actually have a business behind it. I love how she said as well that like pretty much her whole idea behind the business and the best advice she's ever been given is like something, find something good, and find your way to make it better. I think that's like a legendary advice that I'm gonna take away from today. But yeah, it's been a good day. It's been very useful, I think, both for, for us, uh, potentially some interesting leads made, and yeah, we'll see where it takes us. Socially powerful, out. Boom, mic drop.